Okay, recently I was asked um, how to make a pan and zoom slideshow in Linux using open source tools. Um, and you can, there, there's a number of tools. Um, mainly I would suggest uh, either Caden Live or Blender. Uh, Caden Live might be uh, a little simpler, um, but I'm going to use Blender in this tutorial because I prefer it gives you more options. It may seem a little more complex, but really it's not. Um, but it just gives you more options, so it could be more complex if you wanted it to be. But as you're going to see today, it's going to be a very simple process. Uh, I'm using Blender 2.61, and let's go ahead and get started. Um, first thing I'm going to do before I forget, because people want me to do this, is um, I'm going to turn on screencasting. Okay and start screencasting. That will just allow you to see down here in the bottom left of the screen what keys and mouse buttons I'm pressing. So I'm going to hit N to hide that screen and T to hide the one on the left because we're not going to need those little panels. Um, next thing we're going to do, and I've gone over this a number of times tutorials, but go to user preferences, add-ons, and search for plane and you should see an option that says import export plane images as plane or import images as planes. Check that and once you do that, you may want to check Save as Default, and that will leave that checked all the time. Once that's checked, we can come back here to our 3D view, hit Delete to delete that cube, enter to confirm it. Then we hit Spacebar, and we can type in Plane, and you can see we have two options. One is Import Images as Plane. We're going to choose that. I'm going to go to where I have some photos saved, so I'll go to that folder. And you can click up here at this little icon here. It gives you thumbnails so you can see the images that you're looking at. I'm going to choose this one right here, and I'm going to choose Shadeless for this case because we want the picture to always be clear regardless of the lighting in the scene. And we're going to say Import. There it is. I'm going to come down here and click Texture, and now we can see the image on there. I'm going to hit R and then X to rotate it on the X axis, and I'm going to type in 90 and hit Enter. Next, I'm going to hit 1 on the number pad, and I'm going to center scroll to zoom in. And there's the image of my wife up in Colorado. Uh, next thing I'm going to do, because if we look right now, you can see our camera is off at an angle here. And if I hit F12, you see the image, but it's off to the side because of where the camera is. We're going to move the camera to this front view. So I'm going to just hit, um, you should be able to hit Control-Alt-0, but in this current version of Blender, that doesn't seem to be working for me. So I'm just going to hit Spacebar and type in Camera. And you can see the third option down is Align Camera to, and it should say View, but it's cut off. And there we are. Now if I hit F12, it renders the image cropped, of course, as to where the camera is. We're 99% done here. Um, now all we have to do is move the camera around. First things first, let's choose uh, some of our settings here. So on this side panel, uh, and we have the render view clicked here, I'm going to choose here from our presets. I want this the output video to be an HDTV uh, 1080p. Of course, higher the resolution, the longer the render will take. And I like to do things at 30 frames a second, so we'll change that there. Um, now, also, I know that when I'm doing a slideshow like this, I probably want each image to be up for five seconds. Of course, this is completely up to you. Um, five seconds, that allows a second of fading on each side, the beginning and the end, and so you have three seconds of the image there with the panning. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change, since we're doing 30 frames a second, I'm going to click here, and I'm going to say 150 frames is the end frame. So that would give us five seconds, 30 times five. Um, now, we're already at our first frame. You can see that here. Uh, it says 1, and down here we're at the beginning of the timeline. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to align the camera where I want to start this pan and zoom. So with the camera selected, right-clicking the camera, I'm going to hit G and center click and just drag out a little bit. As you can see, the image is a different um, aspect ratio than the camera. That's fine. Um, and I'm going to move it up a little bit. So hitting F12 and scrolling out so we can see the whole image, that this is uh, how the video or the, this little pan is going to start. I'm going to hit Escape. 
And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit I, and I'm going to choose Location, Rotation, and Scale. That sets a keyframe, so that's where the camera's starting. Now I'm going to hit Shift and Right Arrow to jump to the last frame in this case. Um, and then I'm going to grab the camera, zoom in, grab the camera, move it to here. And I'm going to hit I to set a keyframe there. At this point, we can hit Alt-A, and it plays the animation for us. But you'll notice that it's kind of starting off slow, speeding up, and then slowing down towards the end. That's the default with the keyframes uh, in Blender. I prefer it to be all one speed for doing something like this. So what I'm going to do is hit Escape to stop that. And then come up to this little uh, layout screen here. We don't need that, so I'm going to change it to a graph editor. And while hovering over this view, I'm going to hit Control up arrow. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to hit uh, key, interpol mode, and I'm going to change that to linear. And you can see it changed all the animation lines to straight lines rather than curves. Control down arrow to get back out of that. And now if we hit Alt A, you can see the camera stays at a constant speed. I'm going to hit escape there. Now at this point, um, all we have to do is choose where and how we want to save this video. Uh, for now, I'll just save it to my temp folder. I'll call it slide1.avi. And um, you should be able to just choose PNG and XVID here um, and save it as an XVID video that worked in uh, 2.5 and 2.60, but in 2.61, there's a little glitch that doesn't work. What you have to do is choose encoding here, choose preset, and then choose XVID. Now, of course, you can change some of the settings manually, but I'm just going with the default. And at this point, um, obviously save your project along the ways, but I'm gonna hit animation, and it will start rendering the animation right now. Um, and of course, the render speed depends on a lot of things. You can change other settings in the rendering output that speed this up, um, but resolution's a big one and the speed of your computer. But right now, um, I'm getting about uh, two and a half seconds per frame, and we have 150 frames, so do the math on how long that's going to take. So um, definitely slower than uh, a rendering, than uh, probably using Caden Live would probably go a little bit faster, but you could probably speed this up once again. Like We probably don't need anti-analyzing um, that smooths the edge of objects. We're not looking at the edge of objects, so we could turn that off completely and that would speed things up and other options in here, but that's the basics of it. Now, uh, some people, uh, when I've done other stuff similar to this in Blender, say that using Blender for this is overkill. I 100% disagree with that. Um, now, some other programs like Caden Live might make it a few steps shorter and and have some presets for you. Great thing about Blender is it gives you more options because we could turn this into a 3D slideshow by moving the camera around on angles. We're keeping it direct on now, but you have that option. You can do a lot of other stuff, but also you can make your own presets and then just run a script or depending on how you do it, everything can be automated. And so the main difference is, are you gonna do it or are you expecting someone else to do it for you, which is a very common uh, issue with a lot of people. They just want things just to be done for them. That's not what my tutorials are about. My tutorials are learning how to do stuff yourself. Um, so this is doing one slide. In our next tutorial, I'm going to go over basically uh, how to do this to and basically automate it. We're going to create a few different camera movements and then write a quick little bash script that calls upon Blender and goes through all your images in a directory and makes a slideshow uh, for you, or at least the animation for each one. And then you can use Blender or Caden Live to combine them if you want fade effects, um, which could also be automated in the long run. So thank you for watching. Um, uh, Dennis, I believe, was the one that asked for this. Uh, thank you for asking about this. And I hope that you all have a great day. Please visit filmsbychris.com. Thank you. Oh, and here's the final animation of what we just created.